the Yorkshire Ripper has just weeks to live and is suffering from nightmares where he is haunted by the faces of his victims. Serial killer Peter Sutcliffe is reportedly taking a whole range of drugs to cope as he struggles with breathing difficulties, high blood pressure, diabetes and has almost gone blind. The 73-year-old is serving 20 life sentences in HMP Franklin Prison, Durham, after murdering 13 women and being convicted of attempting to murder seven more. One prison source told The Daily Star that the murderer has reached the final stages of his life. Every time he gets ill, he never fully recovers and so is on a steady decline, they said. He is in the final stages of his life and his own death is now something he is preoccupied with. The former Bradford lorry driver's health has been deteriorating for years, with reports earlier this year stating that he has lost vision in his left eye after another inmate attacked him in 1997. An attempt to improve vision in his right eye this year left him without vision in either. He murdered women, who mostly worked as prostitutes, between 1976 and 1981 using knives, hammers, and screwdrivers. And two years ago he confessed on tape to a savage attack on a 14-year-old schoolgirl who he wrongly thought was a prostitute. He approached Tracy Brown, now 57, as she walked home in Silsden, West Yorkshire, in 1975, and struck up a conversation. When they reached the turning to her house, he lunged at her and hit her five times before throwing her over a barbed wire fence when he heard a car approach. My vision had gone because I was so stunned from the attack and my eyes had filled with blood, Tracy said, remembering the attack. I fell several times but forced myself back up. I told myself I had to get home in case he came back to finish me off. Despite having suffered two fractures to her skull, Tracy managed to stagger to a farm worker's caravan and he raised the alarm. Two months after the attack he murdered mother of four Wilma McCann, sparking one of the biggest criminal manhunts in Britain. She is thought to be one of his earliest victims. After being arrested with a prostitute in 1981 and confessing to being the Yorkshire Ripper, Sutcliffe was sentenced in May in the Old Bailey. He had previously been interviewed nine times by officers in relation to the attacks, but had been let go each time. In 2017, police suggested that he may have murdered more women than the 13 he was convicted for and began questioning him about 17 unsolved cases that bear similarities to his previous attacks. He was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia following his life sentence, but was moved to Franklin Prison in Durham from Broadmoor Psychiatric Hospital last year after a ruling that he was sane enough to be transferred. The Yorkshire Ripper's Reign of Terror, a timeline of his murder Sutcliffe, who lived in Bradford, West Yorkshire, believed he was on a mission from God to kill prostitutes, although not all his victims were.
His other victims, aged between 16 and 47, included two university students, a civil servant, a bank clerk and a supermarket worker. Sutcliffe was dubbed the Yorkshire Ripper because he mutilated his victims using a screwdriver, hammer, a knife. He was also convicted of seven counts of attempted murder in and around Yorkshire, Lancashire, and Greater Manchester. Summer 1975, Peter Sutcliffe begins attacking women, two in Keithley and one in Halifax. All three survive, and police do not link the attacks. Thirty October 1975, Sutcliffe carries out his first fatal attack on Wilma McCann, a 28-year-old prostitute from the Chapel Town district of Leeds. January 1976. He murders Emily Jackson, 42, from Leeds, battering her with a hammer and stabbing her with a screwdriver. Twenty three April nineteen seventy seven, Sutcliffe strikes for the first time in his hometown of Bradford, murdering thirty two year old Patricia Atkinson. Point two six June nineteen seventy seven, the case comes to the attention of the national press after Sutcliffe murders Jane McDonald, a sixteen year old shop assistant. The murder and the realization that a serial killer is on the loose in Yorkshire shocks the country. The attacker is dubbed the Yorkshire Ripper by the press, and West Yorkshire Chief Constable Ronald Gregory appoints his most senior detective, Assistant Chief Constable George Oldfield, to investigate the murders. One October 1977, Sutcliffe chooses Manchester for his next attack on Jean Jordan, 20. E dumps her body on an allotment and throws her bag, containing a brand new five pounds note he gave her, into nearby shrubs. Police find the bag and trace the serial number on the note back to the payroll of Yorkshire Holliers T and W H Clark. Who employ Peter Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe is interviewed by police, but provides an alibi placing him at a party. Point two one January to 16 May 1978, Sutcliffe murders three prostitutes Yvonne Pearson, 21, from Bradford, Helen Ritka, 18, from Huddersfield, and 40-year-old Vera Millward from Manchester. June 1979, a tape is sent to police by a man calling himself Jack the Ripper, who has already sent a series of handwritten letters from Sunderland. Assistant Chief Constable Oldfield mistakenly decides that these are the work of the Ripper. Wareside Jack, as he becomes known, is pinpointed to the Castle Town district of Sunderland by voice experts. Detectives are told they can discount suspects who do not have a Wareside accent. July 1979, police interview Sutcliffe for the fifth time. Detective constables Andrew Lapto and Graham Greenwood are suspicious, but their report is filed because his voice and handwriting do not fit the letters and tape. To October 1979, a pounds one million campaign is launched to catch the Yorkshire Ripper. 20 August 1980, the Ripper claims another victim, Marguerite Walls, 47, from Leeds, followed by Jacqueline Hill, 20, a Leeds University student, on November 17.
November 1980, Detective Chief Superintendent James Hobson replaces Oldfield. Hobson downgrades the importance of the Wearside Jack tape and letters. Three January 1981, Sutcliffe admits he is the Yorkshire Ripper after police arrest him with a prostitute. Police admit the killer does not have a Wearside accent. 22 May 1981, Sutcliffe is jailed for life at the Old Bailey. The judge recommends a minimum sentence of 30 years. He is transferred to Broadmoor Secure Hospital in Berkshire in 1984. 21 March 2006, John Humble, a former builder, is sentenced to eight years in prison after he admits to being the Yorkshire Ripper hoax are known as Wearside Jack. 1 June 2006, a report which has been kept secret for nearly 25 years reveals that Sutcliffe probably committed more crimes than the 13 murders and 7 attempted murders for which he was convicted. 1 by police officers over 17 unsolved cases that bear similarities to his past crimes. He is not being investigated over any murders, and it is unknown which of the incidents police think are linked to the serial killer. May 2017, Sutcliffe is investigated over the murders of two women in Sweden. Detectives are said to have inquired about the murders of a 31 year old woman found dead in Gothenburg in August 1980, and a 26 year old woman found dead in Malmo a month later.